This is Level Up Success Podcast with Neth and Truth. Hey, how you doing, friends and family? This is the Level Up Success Podcast. And welcome to another episode where we always try to bring knowledge and power to our listeners. So tell me, Nate, how are we going to start this episode today? Hey, how you guys doing today, man? Hope you guys are having a wonderful day. We sure are here. And, you know, like we uh, get ready for some good content today, all right? So um, in front of me, I have, uh, you know, a, a special person here. She's going to share uh, information about how... Um, about her career and how she manifested to to get into a great mindset. So, well, I'm not going to say much more. Uh, why don't you give us your name, uh, where you're from, and your background? Hi, my name is Rosa, and um, I am... No, no, that's fine. <laughs> Hi, my name is Rosa, and um, my family is from Puerto Rico. I was born and raised here in Brooklyn, in Williamsburg. Okay. Brooklyn. Brooklyn, the house, before it became Williamsburg now, but yes, I yeah. was <laughs> born okay. and raised in Williamsburg. I am a medical sonographer. Okay. Oh, wow. So, um, can you describe a little bit about that for you? Yes, yes. Well, um, I do ultrasounds on high-risk pregnancies. I, um, the patients come to us and we check the babies. We're making sure that there's, um, that they're healthy. And also we take care of the mothers. We make sure that the mothers are healthy and comfortable and don't have any issues. And so the, the outcome would be a healthy baby. Oh, okay. that's great to hear. Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, that's important, man. We want, we all want to have healthy kids. So, you know, she, she's doing something great for us. For the community. Yeah. yeah. So um, what what made you realize that you wanted to pursue this career? Well, actually, I never knew anything about ultrasound. Growing okay. up, that wasn't in, in the curriculum in school. When I was about 19 or 20, I was enrolled in college and I wanted to be an accountant. Mm. And I thought that that was something that I was interested in. I like numbers. And I had a part-time job in a doctor's office the doctor I was his medical assistant and his bookkeeper and all of a sudden his medical assistant quit on him Mm. and um the doctor asked me could you come in and assist me with these minor surgeries and that kind of blew me away I was thinking oh my god I don't know anything about medicine I am your secretary yeah so he just he basically was just like um Oh my God! I got nobody, but I got I got Rosa here. Come on, Rosa. Let's yeah, you can buy on the spot, though. Right? Yeah, that's fine. No, I mean, hey, look. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of twists in life. So I mean, uh, you. I mean, I guess you could proceed with your story, man. It's yes. Pretty interesting. So um, he um made me his medical assistant. And I thought, okay, I really loved interacting with the patients. A lot of the patients were Latino. And I was able to communicate with them. We were able to give them really great medical attention because we, the doctor was Hispanic and I was Hispanic. And um, I really loved helping them, finding out what was wrong with them, giving them the right medication and seeing their progress. But I didn't like the fact that I was during my, um, the brief time that I was his medical assistant, I was assisting him during small surgeries. And I realized that I don't like blood. Okay. <laughs> hey, man, not a lot of people like blood, the sight of blood. Yeah, well, no. I'm scared. Even when they're taking out blood from me, I look the other way. Yes. I oh. mean, I'm so, I can't oh, even no, look at myself. No, I, mean, no, I could care less about that, man. I'll be like, yo, take all the blood you want. But the only thing is I have small veins, so it's, it's, it's hard for him to track it. Yeah. Oh, no, so mine too. they be like. <laughs> oh, yeah, they be having fun. <laughs> Way that I don't understand. I mean, if you're gonna be doing that to people, make have a couple of practice. Yes, no, well, th- that's what I also he taught me. He taught me in his office, he taught me how to draw blood okay. and check the urine and check their pressure. And I really enjoyed it, but I didn't like them going into the minor surgery. There was one time that I almost fainted. Oh, and he was like, you know, you really can't faint while you're helping me. You're holding, you know, the the the, the equipment, the tools. And you probably was like, I didn't ask for this. I didn't <laughs> ask for this. <laughs> this is not my pay rate. <laughs> so at oh. that point, I realized that I did not want to be a surgeon. I did not want to be a doctor. But I really loved helping people. I'm a caretaker by nature. 
So I decided, let me do some research. Let me see um, if there's other avenues that I can take in medicine. And it opened up a huge world to me. It, ultrasound is a modality. There's also, there's CAT scans, there's MRI, there's mammograms, there's bone density, there's physical therapy, respiratory therapy. There's so many different avenues that you can take that our people don't know about. So at this point, I started doing research and I really was interested in ultrasound. I was really interested in the fact that I get to diagnose I'm like a detective. The patients come to me and they explain their symptoms to me. And right there, I just start thinking, what could it be? I, oh, did you eat? Did you not eat? Did, um, when does this happen? And at that point, I start seeking and searching. Mm -hmm. I start looking at their gallbladder, their liver. They, could, it be, could it be something with their um, urinary tract, something with their gastro? And at that point, with a team of doctors together and other modalities, we, we try to figure out what the diagnosis is. And it actually, it's, it's rewarding. Okay. It's rewarding when we find something. Oh, you said you were going through research to see what type of fear it is. Did somebody help you through that, or you had to find it yourself? Or? Well, yes. Actually, um, I knew someone that worked in a hospital. Yeah. And um, he, um, he worked in the hospital, and he knew someone that was going to ultrasound school. Nice. And it was one of his friends. And he said, you know, let me get you the information. And he got me the information, and his friend called me, and I said, okay, this is something. I didn't have, in order to go into the ultrasound school, I needed, I didn't finish my degree yet. I didn't finish my associates okay. yet. So I needed some type of degree or someone to sign the forms for me. But since I was working for a doctor's office, the doctor I was working for, he vouched for me. Okay. So he sent a letter saying that he taught me that I worked for him, with him for two years. I was his medical assistant. I was drawing blood. I was doing the lab work and my patient care. Yes. So at yes. that point, they allowed me into the school. I mean, experience does help, though, because that's how people get started and they will have the experience. So... You are ahead at, at that point. You are ahead. Yes. Uh, yeah. a, a couple of students. So. Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah. No, I mean, it, it, and it's just awesome how you know, like you see how you wanted to pursue a career in accounting. Yes. I mean, it's it's cause, probably because it's like one of the popular careers to choose from. You know, yes. a lot of people you know choose to be accountant, but then you you walked into a, a workplace, yes. and now you're realizing like you you know what like. This yes. is something that sounds cool, you know, without the blood and, yes. and the surgery stuff, <laughs> you know. Like, and then you and then you started doing research. I yes. mean, you got really invested into yes. it. Yes. So yes. since so you got invested, you you started you started pursuing that. So that's man, that's awesome. That, that, and this is how like I feel like this is how um things you know like this is how the best way to pursue a career when you see something that you like while you're working yes. in the field and yes. you you yeah. become exposed to it. Yeah. I didn't know, but a lot of People are not exposed. Yeah. And they don't know about ultrasound. They don't know about CAT scan. They don't know about bone density. Exactly, they don't yeah. know that there's so many different fields. So they should just do the research. Mm -hmm. And the pay is good. <laughs> yeah. It's rewarding. It is. It is. Um, I mean, um, I feel like when people go to study, they don't even do, they even do internship because that's yes. one thing I feel like, that's one thing that hold me back. I actually went to school, started to become a technician. Electronic, but once I got my degree, I couldn't find no job since yes. I think I have no type of experience. Yes, so, yes. one regret that I had that I never did no type of internship or, or yes. job because, like you said, the mm -hmm. reason you decided to change field is because you was working over yes, there yes. and realized that you, oh wow, I yes. could do something else other than accounting. Definitely. Yeah. So, that's the exposure, man, that's very important. Well, with, with ultrasound and CAT scans and MRI and x rays, they do give you an internship. So you do go to school, and after the school, you do get patient care. You have to do a certain amount of hours, and you have to take exams. And a lot of times, because of the fact that you are doing an internship, the people that are there, they, they know you, and they know what you can do, and a lot of times they offer you a job. Okay. So you get exposed to a lot of other people, which you at that point you start networking. Okay, you start yeah, networking. Yeah. So if somebody is needed someplace, they'll remember, oh, wait a minute, there was a sonographer here. She was pretty nice. She was pretty good. She was knowledgeable. Let's call her. Let's see if we can train her. And that's how we all help each other. Wow, I know that dope. I have a mm. lot of, um, in, in my job, we have sonographers. We have interns. We have people that come in just to do the internship. And I try to help them as much as I can. I also try to give them advice. 
And if I find hear of another job, then of course I'm going to recommend them. Of course, yeah, yeah. All right, that's awesome. Um, is, is there a lot of uh, uh, Latinos or you know uh, blacks in 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 this uh, in this field? Do you see? Um, I I now? do see that there are a lot. Sadly to say, I am the only Latina in my practice. I okay. work for a high risk OB. And uh, it's a great practice, but I'm on the only mm -hmm. Latina sonographer, which um, it's sometimes it's a little bit um, difficult because of the fact that we do have a lot of Hispanic patients mm -hmm. and um, those Hispanic patients, they, they are my schedule. Yeah. So sometimes it's just like, oh, my God, I have too many patients. But I really do. The, the patients appreciate the fact that they have someone that understands their language that can speak to them and also relate to them and okay. i give them very the best quality care okay um, do you believe there's gonna be more people our community doing the same thing because you say you got people doing internship and not too many people are uh, have knowledge about the about that field like you say like yeah, yeah. most of the time like in our community uh, accounting is like the first choice because that's the only thing we and, they yeah, give us. And not only that, it's also in the medical field where they think about is just being nurses. Yes. 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 Yeah, so. Well, hopefully now they now with this podcast with Nate. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you both very much for um, doing this and inviting me. Hopefully with um, a little bit of knowledge, maybe some the listeners can um, do their own research and see that maybe that they could be interested in something medicine, something to help the community. It would be nice to have more Latinos and more um, African Americans in this field. Yes, yes, yes. No, no, definitely. No, definitely because, like I said, um, I feel like the reason that's not enough because, like you said, there's not um, enough knowledge about this and and not enough exposure exposure yes yeah. <laughs> exactly and not, 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 i mean rosa gave that word so yeah, 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 yeah. So, so. <laughs> if i need to be correct i don't mind so. no 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 you're good you're good man that's what we're here for man we learn we learn every week man so well, well that's why i'm saying now there's ultrasound there's x-ray there's all types of radiology um there's you can just google it yeah google it other fields in medicine and um there's a lot of schools yeah, no, and, and technology now is getting more adapted. I went to the dentist the other day, and, and like, the experience I got from the dentist, like, compared now to before, was crazy because um back then, you know, they'll have, the, the, you put this thing in your mouth, and they'll say, bite hard, and, you know, like, your gums is all, like, you, 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 know, what I'm <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, I know what you yo, mean. Like, now it's, it's like, nasty now too, they're like, like, yo, don't bite as hard, you good, you know, like, and, 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 and they have these extra machines. Oh, it was a great experience. It is a great experience. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Medicine is um, keep it's amazing. Updating, right? Yes, it keeps every year it can get better and better, yeah. and that's good for us too. Yes, definitely. Oh wow! Yeah, so I know that you um, you know, you you have, you you take care of your patients when when you see them. You know, you 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 kind of get a, a invested in helping you know your patients out. Does um how 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 does it affect? Your mental, your mental state. Like, it, it, does it help you? Or sometimes you feel like you know. You know, sometimes, sometimes it can get a little bit. Um, when the patients are very nervous or anxious, sometimes that can be a little draining. But then you also you realize that they're nervous, they're scared, and we're we're there to help them. A lot of times. I'm more of a psychiatrist than I am a sonographer. A lot of times with me just telling them, you're going to be okay. Don't worry. You know, I've been through this. You're going to be fine. You're going to have a healthy baby. Just relax. Calm down. That that helps a lot. Yeah, yeah, no, no. And putting putting the people in the, in the right mental space is very important yes. because, you know, like, whatever you give your, whatever food you give to your mind is, is, what, is what gets manifested. And it's, 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 an, it's also with COVID, it's... Uh, it's a very scary time. It's yeah. scary to be pregnant and uh, to, and to be in um, in this pandemic that yeah. we have. Yeah. So the patients come in with super anxiety. Yeah, no, I, and I, I kind of wanted to ask that, like, um, how 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 did it affect you guys during COVID? Like, how was how was things before COVID? Uh, 
during COVID and now, you know, like we, you know, we're still living in, yes. in 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 the pandemic area. But I know it's more mm -hmm. recognized. So, yes. like, what is the difference? Well, when the COVID yeah. when COVID first started, and I was watching television at home, and the mayor said, "Everybody stay home, mm -hmm. stay home for two weeks because we are we we're in this pandemic, and we're gonna see if um." If everybody stays home, maybe it just won't keep spreading. And at that point, I thought I was going to be able to stay home for two weeks. So I said, okay, I'm going to stay home. And no, no, my job had other plans for me. <laughs> they, um, I, I called my job and I said, so I guess we're closing for two weeks. And they were like, no, I'm sorry, honey, you're essential. Mm, and I said, yeah. well, that's, what does that mean? They said, you have to come to work. <laughs> and I said, but the mayor said that we can die. And they were like, no, honey, you're essential. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, no, we, I went to work every single day. And it was a little scary for us because of the fact that we were the only ones going into Manhattan. I was the only one on the bus going from Jersey into Manhattan. Wow. And But I had I, it was like the Walking Dead walking down the streets. That's the streets crazy. And in the middle totally of Manhattan, em too. Totally empty. It was really scary. But um, when we got to work, we still did have patients. The patients were very nervous. Also, they were a little upset and frustrated because of the fact that they couldn't have spouses with them. Mm. They couldn't have family members with them. And um, th super high anxiety. Yeah, yeah. No, so that was a little difficult, but we still had to take care of the patients. We take care of high-risk patients. So we had to make sure that the mothers are safe and the babies are safe also. So they had to come in, so we had to be there for them. Okay, awesome. And how, how is it now, now that, you know, like we have more knowledge of, you know, like how, how to take care of, you know, like the procedures with, yes. with COVID-19? Well, now, um, you know, with the sterilization mm -hmm. and um, a lot of our patients are on their second COVID baby. Oh, <laughs> you wow. know? <laughs> yeah. you know, a lot of people that they were so busy working and um, extra curricular activities, mm -hmm. all of a sudden they had to stay home and yeah. they were like, hello, who are you? And and they're on their second baby right now. Oh, so, man. All know, right. So, <laughs> so we're getting been, active out here. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, <laughs> did, that's what COVID did. Yes, COVID has <laughs> been really good for us in the medical field. <laughs> I still have a job. I'm really happy about that. I Thank you, you very much. I don't think you ever lose a job, man. No, no, <laughs> not, no. Not no, that no. field. Not that yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, yes. Yeah. So um, for the patients, they're actually, they're not as nervous as they used to be. And they're getting accustomed to it. And now that we're going back to some type of normalcy. Things are getting a little better. Okay, all right, that's that's pretty dope, man. So, um, is this like, uh, I mean, I, I know you're into this career, but uh, is this the career that you plan to, like, is this is this the future for you? Like, are you gonna stay? In? Oh, and let me ask you first, like, how long have you been doing it for so far? Oh my goodness, <laughs> do I have to tell you this? Eh? I, I mean, I, 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 I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I used to say. That I did this for 20 years. Okay. And my son overheard me once and said, Mom, you keep saying 20 years, but you were doing this before you had me. And I'm 27. Okay. So, <laughs> so at this point. So you could say 27 then. So That's fine. I, I was like, oh my God, really? Has it been that long? So yes. Yes. I've actually done the sonograms on my nieces. And now I'm doing the sonograms on my great nieces, also, and my oh, great nephews. Wow. Oh, so wow. everyone in my family, I've told them who, what their baby is. And, of course, they call me when, you know, they have a little bit of pain or um, they're not feeling well. They're like, Titi Rosa, um, I'm not feeling well. Can I come to your job? I'm like, okay, come on in. Let me just take a look. <laughs> yeah, all right. No, that's pretty, no, no, that's pretty dope. That's pretty dope. Yeah, you got that history of telling them. That's, that's nice. Well, yeah. I, I don't only do um, pregnancies. I do all types of ultrasound. Oh, wow. Wow. So I can do any part of your body. So whenever they don't feel well, they can come to me, and I can just kind of take a quick peek I and calm you. them yeah, down. Yeah, know somebody. <laughs> we know somebody now. I, I got you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um. So, uh, well, what I was gonna get at. So, I mean, is is this the field? Is this where you want to retire, like doing this? Or do you have any other plans? Well, I actually love what I do. I I love patient care. I do want to kind of change the type of um, company that I work for. Eventually, I would like to work for a cleaning setting. I would like to work maybe for a low-income, maybe in um, a low-income community because okay. I think there is where I'm more needed and I can give quality care to patients that sometimes they don't get the care or the... the 
I want to be kind to them. I want them to get good quality care, of course, but I also want them to have a great experience. Okay. So the, the, do you want to like elaborate? Like, is, is it a little bit different you, in the field that you're in now uh, versus the field that you want to... Yes, it's a little bit it's a little bit different. The patients that come to me, they have their private doctors, they have really great insurance. Okay. And the okay. doctors that I work for are they they're high risk, they write books, they write lecture, they um they go all around the world and they teach other doctors. Mm, so it's a really okay. great um oh, wow. oh, that's awesome. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a great company. But a lot of our patients are um, very well off patients. Mm, okay. they're, they're well off and they have very good insurance. Okay. And um, I, I I enjoy working with them and I enjoy learning and working with doctors. But I think that I would be a little happier with patients that don't always get um, the best quality care. Okay. Yeah. No, so even though they don't pay as much, I would be willing to do, take a pay cut. Okay, not at yeah, all. Because you want to look out for the community, and that's good because there's people. Then I feel like that's what we need. We need people of our community helping our own community. Yes, yes. That way we could progress. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, and, and and give and give in the that right mindset, that right attitude. Because you know, let's face it. I mean, we live in New York. I love New York, man. Yes. But we we work too fast paced, yes. and sometimes that that could come up as you know, like. You just too you get these, yeah. You get desensitized. Also yeah. with um, the the clinics and um, in the areas that are poverty stricken, they don't pay well, of course, because they don't get a lot of money from insurance because most of the patients are don't have medical insurance. Yeah. So they're short on funds. So they cannot hire seasoned that's what we call us like a seasoned sonographer okay. um sonographers that have a lot of experience a lot of times the ones that they get are the ones that are straight out of school the doctors that are straight out of school the nurses that are straight out of school because of the fact that they will take the pay the cut, pay cut yeah. until they get the experience and then of course they'll go to the a private way. setting yes yeah. um and, and this is something i mean well i mean this is just my business mindset working uh, when it comes to working with you know like the with the poverty patients, I know that they're lower. I know that you know you don't, there's a pay cut as far as the insurance because the insurance doesn't cover much. But isn't it more volume of patients? Yes, it is more of yeah. a volume. So that means that you're overworked. Mm, okay. You see, you're overworked, and sometimes you do get desensitized. Sometimes you're exhausted, and sometimes you forget that they're a person. They're just a number. Yeah. And yeah. if you have five, six patients waiting for you, and it's two o'clock in the afternoon, and you you have to get them done in an hour and a half, now you're rushing. Okay, now you're not giving yeah. them the quality care, and that's why they don't get the quality care. Sometimes the, there's great doctors, there's great nurses, but they, they're overworked, yes. understaffed. Exactly. Okay. So they can't yeah. give you that, that care. But if you go to a private setting where um, the funds are there, then they give you more time. Okay. So they get it that that, I mean, that special attention. It makes sense. It, it it does make sense because it's yeah, like if you're in a place where it's, you're just dealing with so many people, it gets to your head. And it's not only that, like sometimes yeah, you know, like the the patients themselves, you know, like they're in pain, so they're gonna they're gonna shut out that frustration and it gets it could get to of course. the worker. Of course. So yeah, no, no, it's it's definitely understandable, man. Yeah, definitely understandable. It trickles down. It it trickles down. I mean, I mean it's good to know because not too many patients know that they uh, understand that. I mean, yeah, people in our community go to I guess our community clinic, they don't even know that the people work there or be on the pay and then I get enough fun to do the job faster too. Yes. So yes. 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 thanks for giving us that knowledge. Yeah. And yeah. They, they're overwhelmed. Yeah. It's overwhelmed. So after a while, you, you get desensitized. That's what it is. You really get desensitized. Okay. And especially if you have the, the higher ups asking, why aren't you doing this? And then you have the patients complaining at that point. You're in the middle and you just, you're, you're overwhelmed. Yeah, so why, why why do you want to go down some? <laughs> I, I, no, you know what? You yeah. know what? I do have to say, I, I when I, I did work in a clinic and I loved my patients. They were just so humble. Yeah. They were just so grateful. And a lot of my patients, you know, it, it's the funny thing that when I do get a patient that 
in in my in my um sometimes we do see patients that are really high risk and they have to come to us but their insurance is not that great and when they come in and after I take care of them they're surprised and they tell me you're so nice and I asked them, why did you say that? It's, they said, well, you know, I've never, I've always had such bad experiences. Yeah. No. Where I went, I've, I've waited for hours. They were mean to me. They didn't speak my language. They just didn't communicate with me. I didn't get the results in time. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's pretty sad. Yeah. No, I think, I... It's, and, but I do have to say that at this point in my life, I, I could take the pay cut. Yeah. It's okay. I could take the pay cut. My kids are older and they're taking care of themselves. And right now, I really would like to give back to my community. I would like to to bond with them. I would like to feel that what I do is actually making a difference. Yeah. No, and I, I could relate to you in the in the sense of of giving that care to 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 your patients. Like, um, I feel the same way with with my customers. Every customer that I deal with. They they say the same thing to me. They say, "Man, like the experience here has been different." Because sometimes they come in with 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 these strong, uh, with a strong character. Yes, yes. And I realize that the reason that they come like that is because they experience some, you know, something in another store. Yes. And they just feel like every, you know, the system is the same everywhere. Of course. They they come upon our store and they're like, "Oh, wow, yeah. this is different." Yeah, you it's know? amazing. So you know, so it, it we do need more people like yourself. Yes, like yes. you know, like well. I don't oh, like to botch on myself though, so much. Yeah. You know, um, <laughs> let, let the customers do that when yeah. they see it. Yeah. <laughs> so sometimes I have patients that come in and they're um, they're from a different country yeah. and they don't speak the language and they're they're intimidated. They really are intimidated. And we we treat them like I treat them like I would treat anyone else, but, but I engage with them. I engage with them, I speak to them, I speak to them in their language, and that just kind of just just breaks down all the barriers you understand yeah, yeah. at that point they're just like me and at that point let, let's let's together let's see what we can do so the outcome of course is so you can have a healthy baby yeah, and yeah. a healthy mom and all of us together awesome. and a lot of times they bring their parents in and they love the fact that I'll talk to them in Spanish and yeah, they're like yeah. oh my god you have like Espanol que bueno <laughs> that's you know? nice, that's and I'll nice. fool around with them and I'll say you know I'm a mom too I can't wait till I'm a grandma and yeah, I, you yeah. know and it, it's nice that having that that um that relationship with them it's really yeah, nice yeah. Oh, it's, it feels awesome. like home when when you're um tending your patients I mean and I'm only asking because you know the community um do you see uh a lot of times the the people that you're checking for sonograms um are, are there like families that are together? Do you see like a lot of uh, single moms going in there? You know, like you know, I don't see a lot of single moms. Okay. I, well, actually, what we are seeing now a lot is we're seeing a lot of um, women that have decided that they want to use IVF and they want to do it on their own. Maybe they didn't find um, they didn't find the husband, yeah. and they figured they really want to have a baby. And because modern te t technology has really come a long way, yeah. now they can do IVF. And okay. so I do have a lot of same-sex parents, okay. which is really yeah. nice. It's yeah. really nice, um, and they're on their second, third baby, and they are so loving, and it's wonderful that it can be done. So that's that's something that in with the last couple within the last couple of years has changed, which is really nice. It's nice the fact because I don't see people as man or woman; I see them as souls. Of course, yeah, yeah. So it's really nice to have this loving, loving couple come in and be treated with such respect. Yeah. You understand? I treat yeah. them with respect. Of course, yeah. And that's something that it's everybody should have respect, yeah. and it shouldn't be. You shouldn't be rewarded for it. No, there's no reason for it. Yeah. It's This is the way it's supposed to be. You're supposed exactly. to treat everyone the way you want to be treated. And this yeah. is how I treat my patients. I treat them the way I would want to be treated. Because I am a patient also. Of I've course. gone to doctor's offices. And I've had doctors be rude to me. I've had technicians be rude to me. not knowing Them not knowing what I do. I just go in as a regular patient. And after yeah. a while, I'll tell them, you know, that was a little rude. You know, I'm in patient care myself. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I understand that you're overwhelmed, but you really should treat the patient the way you want to be treated. Exactly. So this yeah. is this is this is what I, what I do. But that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, it's but things. But no, a lot of um, 
a lot of the parents that come in, they do have some support system, whether it's the same sex, whether it's a grandmother, whether it's a best friend. So that's what you want. You want support, no matter yeah. where it comes from. I, I only ask that because, you know, like we're we're living in a in a time where, you know, like there's a lot of things going on where it's um, mm-hmm. the family is not united, you know, and you get a lot of these, you know, like... Uh, uh, separated, you know, yes. like uh, couples. Yes. And, you know, I just want to ask you, like, um, if, you know, based on what you see, like, how important is it to have, like, that foundation, like a family for, you know, like, for to raise your kids and things like that, you know? Oh, like, it, it's, it's really important, but also um, it is important to have a family. Mm-hmm. But you have to realize that if someone in your family is toxic, yeah. sometimes one good parent is better than two bad parents. And sometimes if you're in a relationship where there's abuse or there's neglect, I think you should get out of it. Even if you are pregnant or there's children in, involved, you should get out of it. Because if you are not in a good place, you can't raise your children. up in the next week episode yes, but i was in a toxic relationship i was in a codependent relationship and i was the giver and he was the taker oh i mean and, and i know that we are raised uh, as, as like you know you know we are raised in a sandwich. and because you didn't understand what you was feeling at the time the 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 communication between you and and your husband wasn't really was and i found this great frame that i love and, this, and it's, cool. it's this man and this woman hugging and it has all these psychedelic colors on it that i really love this red and blue and green Problem. and that frame have- stood on my floor for eight months I couldn't months. put it up. I couldn't get anybody to put up. So I met this really nice young man. And he saw my picture frame on the floor. Left. And the next weekend, he came by to visit me again. And he brought his drill. And he put up my frame. Order. How can you love someone if you don't love yourself? We want to so, spread love. We want to just help humanity. Yeah, I should probably do a future podcast. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. We do.